This is a Socialist News and Views special report. I'm Nick Schillingford coming to you from the Urban Cabin Studios in South Minneapolis with this special report. Donald Trump has again been elected president of the United States. According to the final results on The Guardian, Trump received 75,609,700 votes or 312 electoral college votes. And Harris received 72,469,604 votes or 226 electoral college votes. Not only did Trump win the popular vote by millions more than Harris and receive the over 270 electoral college votes needed to secure the presidency, but Republicans will control the House and Senate at the start of the new administration. Many people are rightly terrified about this incoming administration and President Trump have specifically seen or received comments from individuals with disabilities, trans folks, women, immigrants, and retirees. Folks I've spoken to are rightly concerned about loss of bodily autonomy, loss of income, as well as violence, and even death, not just from the administration and the state itself, but from the most vicious of those in American society who buy into Trump's brand of authoritarianism and white supremacy. Unfortunately, the Democratic Party has no moral high ground to offer. The Biden-Harris administration has spent the last year plus working with Israel not only to engage in a genocide in Gaza, but also to bomb Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Iran, and Yemen, even Tim Waltz who the media labeled as a folksy uncle, said, quote, the expansion of Israel and its proxies is an absolute and fundamental necessity for the United States, end quote, in his debate with J.D. Vance. The Democrats also claimed the economy was doing well, even though anyone who was trying to live in the society could see that was not true. They talked about getting tough on immigration, and they cuddled up to people like Dick Cheney, the war criminal and key architect of the U.S. forever wars that started After September 11th, the Democrats have failed to codify Roe v. Wade, again and again failed to pass minimum wage rise, let COVID-era benefits end without a fight, broke the rail strike, and on and on. But in just a few months, the Biden-Harris administration will be out and Trump-Vance will be in. In the remaining months, we should continue to apply pressure on the outgoing administration to stop the genocide in Gaza. But we must also be quickly gearing up to fight against the Trump administration and what will likely be swift moves to attack the poor, the marginalized and anti-capitalist activists, among many others. We must organize, build coalitions and solid local connections and begin to discuss community self-defense. Trump is a capitalist and he is not on our side. He is our class enemy. Build the movement against Trump. Make the U.S. ungovernable is on Fight Back News by Freedom Road Socialist Organization November 6th. It says the election was a referendum on the genocide in Palestine, an escalating situation in the Middle East, as well as the economy, saying, quote, at day's end, the rotten choices available to us stand as an indictment of the capitalist system, end quote. The article predicts attacks on the labor movement, national minorities, immigrants, women, LGBTQ folks, and it says the genocide in Palestine will continue under Trump. But it says, quote, the good news is that this war on the people is not going to be one-sided. It is entirely possible and necessary to build strong, popular movements that are capable of serious resistance. This is not the time to keep our heads down. It's time to unite all who can be united to defeat Trump's reactionary agenda, end quote. We must give hope to those that are currently demoralized, it says, and realize that Trump is only a symptom of the decline of U.S. empire. Gabriel Wenant writes for Descent Magazine November 8th, a piece titled Exit Right, which says in the subtitle, quote, Trump has remade Americans and to defeat Trumpism requires nothing less than the left doing the same, end quote. It outlines Harris's ineffective campaign against Trump and says, just like The Democrats in 2016, Harris, is trying to blame this loss on racism and misogyny. While it says these are definitely big obstacles that must be overcome, it says they can't entirely account for the loss. And what's more, quote, these are not static phenomena. Trump mobilizes these forces. The task of his opponents is to counter mobilize and defeat them. A successful campaign draws on the material of the existing society and assembles it into a portrait of the present and a vision of the future. It does not simply reflect frozen facts of public opinion and common sense, but reorganizes them and ultimately produces new forms, end quote. You can read more on dissentmagazine.org. 
The Trump White House and How to Fight It is on Workers' Voice US by Michael Schreiber. It says it is an updated version of an article they printed on Election Day stating, quote, It should be clear that President-elect Trump is a scoundrel, a racist, an abuser of women, a pal of white supremacists, and a wannabe authoritarian strongman, end quote. Some people, it says, were likely duped by the racism and nationalism of Trump's campaign, and some gravitated to his promises of more jobs and lower prices. Quote, yet, according to polls, millions did not vote at all, which should put to rest the notion that there was a massive turn to the right by the U.S. working class, end quote. Trump has singled out immigrants as scapegoats and vowed to close the border and put large tariffs on goods entering the U.S. from other countries. He also plans to make significant cuts to the federal government. But, quote, of course, Trump is liable to be confronted by many obstacles in achieving his stated goals. For one thing, he is sure to encounter strong headwinds in the tightening arena of inter-imperialist productionist policies and trade wars, as well as military unrest on several continents. And, quote, you can read more on workersvoiceus.org. As mentioned before, Trump is not likely to end the bombing in Palestine. People's World has an article on November 13th. SF Telgon writes in the article titled, Israel's far-right government celebrates Trump win plans West Bank annexation. Quote, the right wing in Israel is in full celebration mode. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his ministers rushed to congratulate Donald Trump on his victory. Netanyahu boasted at the beginning of the week that he had already had time to speak with Trump three times since his election, end quote. It says Trump's plans to designate Mike Huckabee ambassador to Israel is one sign of Washington supporting annexation of the West Bank under Trump. And more to the point, quote, Finance Minister Bezalel Smotrich hailed Trump at a meeting of the Parliamentary Caucus of his National Religious Party, Religious Zionism, and called for the official annexation of all West Bank territories, end quote. You can read more on peoplesworld.org. Liberal arrogance and hatred on display after Trump victory is an article by Margaret Kimberly, Black Agenda Report executive editor and senior columnist, November 13th, 2024. It highlights the reactions of some Harris voters calling for Black men who voted for Trump to be killed by police or Latinos who voted for Trump to be deported. Kimberly writes, quote, apparently Trump is not the only authoritarian in U.S. politics. Democratic voters also believe in a hierarchy that tells them to act like children abused by an unstable parent who demands their silence. Politics is now about feeling superior to others rather than being able to cogently argue against them or defend one's own position. It is not about asking their betters anything, including why they lost, end quote. And also, quote, it seems that the U.S. is full of mean and angry people. Of course, their own government engages in austerity meant to grind them down economically and to deprive them of any political recourse. But the people don't have to accept this treatment. They don't have to become the angry mob, end quote. It says that many liberals likely realize that the Democratic Party is also controlled by oligarchs who will continue to fight against their interests. So instead of taking on the party or the oligarchs, many liberals instead feel safer just criticizing others on social media. You can read more on blackagendareport.com. From sending military funding packages to Israel, Ukraine, Taiwan, etc., the Republicans and Democrats seem most bipartisan when it comes to issues of war and military equipment. So maintaining a strong anti-imperialist and anti-war movement continues to be important regardless of who is in office. This weekend, Sunday, November 17th, there will be a kid-friendly rally for climate, not for war. The event is called by Families Against Military Madness and Women Against Military Madness at Painter Park, 620 West 34th Street, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55408, from 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. It says on the event page, quote, a family-friendly rally for people, planet, and Palestine, end quote. Socialist News and Views folks will be out at the rally with a box of free kids, youth, and young adult books. And finally, this Monday was what is referred to in the United States as Veterans Day. And so on that note, I leave you with a few thoughts on Veterans Day, veterans, and war from Craig, a volunteer at Mayday Books. Here's the clip. Yes, I'm a member of Vets for Peace. My name is Craig. I served in Vietnam from March of 68 to May of 1970, I was a combat engineer in the Army. And uh, when you go to war, you're all into it. I joined the Army to fight communism. And uh, during the course of the war, I came out totally opposite. So you usually have to learn the hard way about war. And most veterans, when they come out of war, would not go back, do it again. Why do we... 
When did Veterans Day come around, and why do we have Veterans Day? Is it? It used to be Armistice Day. It was a worldwide holiday called Armistice Day to celebrate peace after World War I. The United States Congress and President Eisenhower changed it in the 50s to honor veterans and not peace. So they changed the day to Veterans Day in the 50s. But it's still Armistice Day in most of the world, meaning a peace, a day of peace. So why should all... So you, you think all veterans, uh, you know, should be, like, actively anti-war, should be opposing war. Why is that so important? Why is it so important that veterans... Well, veterans were there. They should... Uh, most of them, not all of them, they're pretty divided, but a lot of them realize that, uh, you know, it was just... Uh, just not what they were told when they were going in. We were not liberating anybody. We were not helping anybody. We were basically destroyers, trying to destroy and weaken the enemies of Wall Street. And I, I just said one of the so so yeah, Veterans Day comes up, and I know people, even people that are anti-war, that are like smart, and they realize that you know war's a racket, as we were talking about before. But, like, they still get into the, like, hero worship of, like, soldiers and veterans. How do, what are your thoughts on how people separate that out in their mind or why they think, you know, like, soldiers are really great and heroic even though they say that wars are bad? Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, it's part of the propaganda system. We're uh, taught and brainwashed to think that when we go, when we send our soldiers all over the world, it's so they can have the right to vote, freedom, defending American freedom. But that's not the case. Soldiers are sent around the world, U.S. soldiers are sent around the world to defend and expand the empire for the, for the benefit of the rich and wealthy. That's it. Let's continue to organize and oppose the ruling class and their agenda of austerity, bigotry, and war in as many ways as we can and make the country ungovernable for them. Hope to see everyone in the streets. That's our special report. Thanks for listening. Solidarity. This has been a Socialist News and Views special report.